In this video, I want to take a look at LSU and their point guard situation. Has LSU figured it out with POA, and is that the go for the rest of the season? Or is poor HVL just getting a bad rap and taking the blame for poor defense all around on LSU's part? In this video, we are going to take a very deep dive on this game and what adjustments LSU made in the second half that made all the difference. Basically, they played defense. Before we start, if you like the content, then please subscribe to the channel and please give the video a like. All right, let's get into this. Now on Sunday, after watching the South Carolina demolishing of UConn, I was in Captain Will's chat just listening to his post game so I could hear Carolina fans tell me how wonderful they are, which they did. While doing this, I was keeping an eye on LSU Alabama and lo and behold, they're down by 10 at halftime. In the chat, a South Carolina fan sent me a message saying, no doubt you'll do your next video on LSU and not give us the credit we deserve. And I was like, yep. LSU goes on to lose this game. That is the lead story. And I went on to say, hey, if it bleeds, it leads. And if LSU would have lost that game, LSU, they would have been hemorrhaging on the operating table as their season pretty much would have been done in my opinion. You cannot lose to Alabama at home in February. It just doesn't work in terms of getting ready for the postseason. And then come third quarter, what do you know? Poa comes out starting with HVL on the bench and I'm like, ugh, even if LSU does win, I still have my story here as the story is HVL on the bench and Poe was starting, and then obviously LSU had their amazing comeback and overwhelmed Alabama. And the obvious story is, uh, has LSU found their point guard in Poa? I was curious to see what Kim Mulkey was going to say in the press conference, and her take was, we had to change things up, so at the end of the first half, we were getting beat up so bad. I had to go to zone defense, which they did for a period of time, which she felt slowed them a tiny bit and knocked Alabama out of their rhythm. And then to get things going in the second half, she went to a press, which she rarely does. And then she said Poa was starting because the reason Poa was on the court at the start of the third is she's our safety in the press, and she's the best one at that, and that's the only reason for it. And of course, if I had very good CGI, I would have like Kim Mulkey's nose growing like Pinocchio. But then if you go on to listen to her in the press conference, she called out exactly what LSU's problems were in the first half which was basically the pick and roll. And everybody looked bad. It wasn't just HVL. Like the one that looked the worst in the first half was actually Falaje Johnson. I wasn't sure if she was trying to go over the pick and roll or switch it. And she had no idea. Like she and Angel Reese just were not communicating. And then the pick and rolls that Angel Reese was involved with, like every time Angel Reese would sag and, and, and they were done. And, and, and the other issue that LSU has continued to have, whether it's POA or HVL on the court, is they just give up so much penetration to the basket and then players sag in and it opens up the three-pointers. And, and that's essentially what happened in the first half. So either they got pick and rolled and then players would collapse and they'd throw it out for three or the help defense was just too strong. Like one time HVL was was really strongly helping with help defense and just gave the open look. Now as well, combine this with their transition defense was just bad as well. And you have a combination for a terrible first half. And Alabama, to their credit, punished LSU. So I, I couldn't find halftime stats but I counted up the shots, and what I had was they went 15 for 35, so they shot 42%, but as well, I had that they took 19 three-pointers and made eight of them. Now, I think on the broadcast, they said they were shooting 50% from three at halftime, which, which it seemed like, but that that's what I counted up, not official. But it was clear that Alabama's strategy, you give us the open three and we are taking it. And then LSU, Kim Mulkey said they had a prayer meeting, which, and she said Baptists would understand. I'm not a Baptist, so I imagine she read them the riot act and said, play some defense. And yes, they did play high pressure defense and got a few initial turnovers. But more importantly, they finally figured out the pick and roll. The main one was Angel Reese. Instead of sagging, she started to ice the pick and come up and switch. If they were switching hard, she would switch hard. As in the first half, they would throw the pick, but Angel Reese was sagging so far back 
when the guard would look to switch, like Reese could not challenge the shot because she was so far off. Now the play of the game was the Reese block shot and then Poa takes it down and throws the behind the back pass. But what, if you watch before that, the defense they did, like Reese switched and she was in a low position on the guard. The guard couldn't do anything on her. And that was her best defensive play of the game. And then after that, it became contagious. Like they were locking in and even like Williams was like fighting through that. The, the, again, they read them the right act at halftime when they were doing that dribble handoff on the sideline, the players were challenging it and going at the Williams even drew like a, a moving pick on, on one of those it, just because they all, it was infectious and they were all playing. HVL got back in in the third and she had good defense as well. Like she, they tried to drive on her and she used her feet and got across. I'll, I'll show the clip of that. But the difference between HVL and POA, it was the play when POA was able to recover after going under the pick and blocking a shot. I mean, HVL just can't do that as she is not as long as POA. But at the same time, before everybody goes hyperbolic over POA, she has her issues on defense as well. Like she got exposed at top, like got almost turned around on one and on the pick and rolls as well. She struggled with that a bit. And, and then she didn't lose the ball, but something was interesting. When she was bringing the ball up, Alabama player was able to poke it away. And that's sort of the worry with POA. If you have somebody really aggressive defensively, is she going to handle the ball and handle that if she's out there for 25 to 30 minutes, which is why I still think HVL is their number one option in terms of being the starter and, and getting the majority of the minutes. But I do think Mulkey will play the hot hand between all three guards of Poa, HVL, and Falaje Johnson. One other switch I noticed in the first half, Mulkey briefly did this, and it could have just been to try to change things up, but she went super small. I wanted to see this lineup. So she took out Reese and put Morrow in at center, and, and then so had HVL, Williams, Poa, and Johnson. Now, I really think she should play that lineup again or give it another go because I think that's a much better lineup than putting Del Rosario out there because when Del Rosario's out there, once again, they get her in pick and roll. They did that at the end of, I, I think, at the end of the second half. There's a, there's a clip there where they're just hunting her to put her in pick and roll, and the guard just takes her off the dribble to the basket. There's another one towards the end of the game where Poa as well, they, they do a pick and roll with Del Rosario, and Poa gives up the uh, three-pointer. So, yeah, I, I would go small. If, if Reese needs a blow during the tournament, if you can if you can afford to do that, if it's not a giant team that's going to crush you on the boards. So I imagine many were expecting a hyperbolic video of the sky is falling, but in my opinion, that was a good win for LSU. They got challenged. They responded. They demonstrated they could play good defense. You know, that was a good defense the second half. They just need to start putting in that together consistently, and I still have time to do it. So don't write off LSU just yet. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good night.